Hi everyone. I'm quickly trying to put this on my Insta story so that um, people can join us and they will know that we are live and also put it on my WhatsApp. So we usually we'll wait for Funta to come in and then also give people like five minutes to join us. Okay, so I'll put that on my Insta story. Putting the second one on my WhatsApp. I don't wait till you so tell I don't they lose weight. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, so I think that has gone up on my WhatsApp. And yeah. So, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining in. While we are waiting for everyone to join us, can you please share this on your, share our flyer on your Insta stories so that your friends can join us, so that your families can join us, so that any woman who is, you know, looking to be awesome and complete and balanced can join us. Please help us share it on your Insta story and share it on your WhatsApp story, wherever it is that you can share it, please share it so that um, more people can join us. But in our usual style, we would wait for five minutes for everyone to join us. And while Instagram, you know, does the announcement. Hey, Big Sis, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. We usually would wait five minutes before we start. Um, okay, I think Funto is here now. Okay, so we're just going to wait um, like two minutes more. Okay, I'm trying to add Funto. Please help us share it on your Insta story. Help us share it on your Insta story. Help us share it on your WhatsApp. Just so that more people can join us. And, you know, this can be as fun as our usual party. We've literally been having a blast since Wednesday last week. It's been yeah, amazing. Man. Like, mind-blowing. In fact, blown. I didn't expect the kind of um, response that you guys have, you know, the love that you guys have shown. I will not lie. I am so grateful because, um, you know, to God be the glory, this is not for accolade. This is not for any kind of, you know, popularity or whatever it is. It's just because, you know, there has been a poking in my heart. Like, there's that pinch in my heart to do this. Um, because, I like I've, as I have been saying since Wednesday, I realized that a lot of you guys who follow me um, look at me and, like, a lot of the things that I do seem quite aspirational. Like, no, this girl can't be real. But the truth is, this life, this space where you feel complete, where you feel like, you know what, I want to do that and I can do it, irrespective of obstacle, is very possible. It's a life that is attainable. It's a life that can happen to you. You just have to be intentional about it. It doesn't fall from... It, it, there's no... There is no... Uh, there's no magic. There is no magic. And I decided that I know a couple of people that I look at their lives and I'm so grateful. I look at them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm inspired. Like, uh -uh, how can somebody be this efficient? So I said, you know what? If you think that it is impossible, I'm going to bring people who are living this life that I even see. And I say, wow, that's amazing. I want to achieve that mm. level of, you know, that level of mastery in this particular area of my life. And honestly, to get to the point where you say you are whole, there are different fragments that make up that, you know, that place. You know, there is the fitness part. There is all there's yesterday we had intimacy. It was two hours of steamy hot information. Not quite really blessed us. And today I said, What is awesomeness without God? Nothing. Every other thing Absolutely. will fall apart. You know, that center that holds it is God that is the center that I am reading my notes. Without God, nothing happens. And I said, You know what? I was born, Funta, I was born a Muslim. I was born wow. Muslim, yes. And then, you know, I got saved and I'm here today. Sometimes when I speak, people wow. are like, wait, uh-uh. Were well, you not at one time a Muslim? And I'm like, it really doesn't matter, right? This is where I find myself now. This is my mental state. This is my understanding. This is my relationship with God right now. Mm. So I said, let me bring somebody who a lot of people, you know, um, see from that spiritual angle also let her come and shed more light to it so that it's not a, it's not just a case of Toyosi is doing this just by herself so tonight we have Funto Iboye and
from afar, Funto is somebody that I'm like, God, why can I not? I need to, I need to get close to you on this level, <laughs> on this level, you know? Sometimes it looks like it's, 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 it's not doable, but Funto, you have shown me, like, without talking, without oh. talk, one of my biggest goals in my life is to impact people without saying a word. Because mm. the truth is, when you start to force the information down people's throat, it's no longer working, it's no longer influence. When I look at you, and I'm like, no, Kini, I can do it. Funto, you inspire me in so many ways. I sit down and I'm like, okay, do you see, what exactly is it that you want to change in how you nurture your relationship with God? And then I look at mm. something from you and I'm like, okay, I'm inspired. I can actually, you know, try and um, bring this in as subtle as possible as my life allows because the truth is, our circumstances are different, you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that determine how individual lives are. So, yeah. I brought Funta today, guys, to come and tell us that, you know what, it is possible to actually be everything you want to be and still be spirit coco. It is very possible. It is very, very possible. Mm -hmm. So, please, Funta, can you please nice. introduce yourself officially? <laughs> First of all, I must say super, super well done, sis. And thank you for having me on this live conference. Honestly, I do not take it lightly. I'm super honored. Um, I feel like this is really a privilege. I mean, I mean, like you said, like we've basically known each other from Instagram, right? But it feels like we're so connected. And that's exactly. something about kindred, you know, mm -hmm. about your tribe. You might be in different cities different nations but when you see something there's that feeling you that leaps because you just know that you're connected because you just know that you're related so i really do not take this lightly that you have me on this show today thank, thank you, you so much, much. i'm super well done for what you're doing i mean i don't know i don't have any other i don't have any introduction basically i'm just this um really young girl really in love with god really sold out to to the cause of Jesus Christ. I feel like that's the biggest definition of my life. And I'm super unashamed about it. Like, I don't care what anybody says. You can, you, I mean, you know, people have told me, people have sent me messages like, you this phone to you. Why do you carry Jesus on your head so much? Mm. Because you don't understand the depth of what Jesus has done for, done me. for me. I understand mm. And I know it. So because I understand what he has done for me, why won't I carry him on my head? You know, it's just like the woman at the well that Jesus met, right? I mean, Jesus told, her, her story about how she did not have husband and she has been with five different men. This woman ran into town to tell everybody, basically, all of you come and see, my oh, dear, come and come see. And see. Mm. Literally, my life. I'm, mm. I'm like the girl that God brought from absolutely nowhere. No like you know, mm. the story. Like I was born out of wedlock. My mom tried to abort me three times. She did not want me. Right. I have all that background coming. Wow. And then Jesus has literally made my Jesus is the reason why I'm whatever I am right now. And then I will say that I will not. I won't carry on my head. I will carry on my head, on my shoulders, on my knees, on my toes, everywhere. Mm. I will carry. Him. So mm. I think that that's the biggest definition of my. Of, of who I am to me is that I'm, I'm super crazy about Jesus. I'm sold out to him completely. Yeah. So wow. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Fonto. That was very profound. Like, it, it seems like this entire week, there's been a lot of revelation. Bumi came mm. and dropped Jesus booms on us and everyone was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I love God. it. You know, I now, love now, it. Now, now, if I came here today, she dropped and if I yesterday was steamy hot, I, I, I just cannot. I can't And just at the tip of starting today, he's already feeling like, you know, it's going to be a whole lot. Thank you so much for that introduction, Funto. So, Funto, Thank you. Um, I put out words and I asked people, a, a couple of people some questions and I said, what would you want Funto to talk about? And one of the things that, you know, the, so I, I kind of like put the common questions together. And one of the very common one is that, you see, what exactly does it mean to actually say that you are spiritually inclined? Mm. So please, okay. can you just, you know, tear it apart for us? I love, I love the question. So when, when um, the simplest way to understand what it means to be spiritual is being led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, spirituality, there are different types of spirituality. There's voodoo, there is, but when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to God, when it comes to our relationship with Christ, spirituality really simply means being led by the Holy Spirit. So you're in tune with him, in step with him, and being led by him. 
That is basically what it means to be a spiritual person. As long as you're led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, I think that's, that's the simple definition for yeah, being that spiritual. Answers it. That answers it. Thank you very much. Now, Futo, so there is this thing, there is this, um, people throw the word spirituality around a lot, and I've realized that there is a very thin line between spirituality and you know being religious i want you to um explain to us really because a lot of people are confused and sometimes because of that confusion people tend to step away the moment you start to say something they start feeling like ah what did they all you know now can you please just you know give us a clear difference the clear difference between being spiritual and just being religious i want you to go as in okay, as you want to go from the yeah okay so basically you know i just said that spirituality is about being led by the holy spirit right mm -hmm. so spirituality comes before you you can even be led by the holy spirit it comes from a place of having that relationship with god it comes from a place of knowing who god is and having a real relationship with him religion when so religion is about doing things that makes you feel spiritual or hmm. makes you look like you are spiritual but you are just doing it to i mean so they say oh we want to if because we are christians we call ourselves christians so we need to pray i need to pray by 5 a.m in the morning you mark it in your calendar uh they say we should read our bible this this on this our journey this our christian life you know we go to church in my church our pastor say our pastor said that we should study the word so read you go you put it on your to-do list prayer 5 to 6 p.m at the 5 to 6 a.m whatever uh, reading bible 6 to 7 p.m that is religion because you're not doing it from a place of relationship when it comes to relationship you relate with god just like this is just literally what like what we're doing now exactly. So exactly so you're talking to god you're conversing with god it's like a relationship is as real as any relationship with any other person that you have and i like to say that it's like a relationship with your husband because christ you know, Christ, um, scripture says that we are the bride of Christ. Mm. So it's a marriage. So Christ is the husband. The church is people are the bride. And that's what God wants. That is the exact same relationship that God wants. Exact same type of relationship that a man and a wife and his wife has, but in a deeper form. So you see, that's why you can literally only be intimate with your husband. Why? Because intimacy comes from a place of trust. And trust is not mm. something you don't just meet somebody and trust them. There are certain things I won't speak, I won't tell you to yourself. There are certain things you won't tell me about yourself because we're not that deep yet. We might eventually grow, you know, if we if were if we intentional about our relationship, you know, we can grow to be close and we, we can start sharing, we can start opening up stuff with ourselves. And that's exactly what it is with God. So it starts from, you know, God, I desire to know you more. And you start getting to know him, you start talking to him. As simple as you wake up, in the morning or any time of the day basically and you say you you know you say to god god it's just like when i mean i remember when i just met my husband if you've ever been in a relationship for those of us who are married or even singles if you've ever been in a relationship in the beginning of the relationship you know that you always want to spend more time with the, same with the person true i remember that i will call my husband then it was mtn free call ah. 4 a.m <laughs> 4 a.m i mean i'm going to log the following day but every day I will stay awake 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. We are on the phone. I can't even remember what we are talking about. But we are just just uh, that's exactly what God wants. God wants you to, so it's not a it's not religion says uh, okay, when you go in the presence of God, say this, do this, don't do this. God see, God as when I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, that cutting was cut into two, and mm. God gave up to them. So we all have access to him you don't need anybody you don't need any person to pray for you pray to god on your behalf you don't need anybody mm. to go to god on your behalf you have the exact same access so this relationship with god is not the exclusive reserve of a set mm. of people mm. it is for everybody and it just simply means and this is this is me this is how i relate to god i'm tired god i'm tired i really don't know what's wrong with me today god this person is annoying me God, my husband just said something to me. Please, can you knock him on his head? This is literally the conversation <laughs> that I have with God. On days when I don't feel like talking, I open my journal and I write because I, I communicate better when I'm writing. Even when I'm even with my husband, if my husband does something, he would either get an email for me 
Oh, or you wow. will get a so I'm Instagram. Not, so, I'm not, so I'm not crazy, right? I'm not crazy. It's <laughs> kindred. You will get a WhatsApp or an email or Instagram DM because I communicate better when I write. I will be able to write out exactly how I feel. I and feel. that's how I do with God as well. I will open my journal. God, this is what I'm going through. I'm feeling certain. I'm feeling a certain type of way about this person. I don't like what, what how this person spoke to me today. You know, whatever. I am sensing that there's some pride in my heart. Please help me. I would write exactly how I feel, exactly what I am going to be. That's what God wants. God wants us to come to Him uninjured. Come as you are. Just pour out. You know, have a conversation with Him. That's what He's looking for. He wants you to have a convo, just as you are. You would have a conversation with your friend. That's hmm. what God wants you to have with Him. So my relationship with my husband, I mean, or even with your normal friend, you will not say, I mean, it's not every time you say, oh, today oh, I'll be telling my husband. Today we are only going to talk by five a.m. to six a.m. That's our talking time. Then in the evening. We will now meet again to talk. That's what some people do with God. But that's not what God wants. God does not want us to box him to any time. Hmm. Hmm. God does not want us to be a one one hour per day. He wants he wants you to constantly to continue. Continue. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's ongoing. As you're going about your day, whether you're at the office, something happens. I like, hey God, I don't know what's up with my boss today, but please just help me. You are going to the market. So. Exactly. You're going to the market, God, please just lead me to the to the right deals. That's literally how I live my life. Like, God is with me. I, I feel like and I act like as if God is with me every every moment because that's what it is. And that is really what it is. Scripture says he is with us always. Oh, mm -hmm. Always with always. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. perception. Always is not once, is not with us just in the morning or just mm -hmm. at night. He's mm -hmm. always with us. So I relate with him like he's there, like he's, he's really there with me. So times when I'm, whether I'm happy, whether I'm sad, whatever it is I'm going through, that is how I relate with him. So that's the difference between having a real relationship and I'm just being religious. religious. Exactly. So a relationship is it's just like a relationship with any other person. Well, it's likened to a relationship with your spouse. Do you see? Because that's the closest relationship you would have in your life. Basically, and you can be so by the time you grow, you grow in your relationship with God, you see that you're more intimate with Him. You can open mm -hmm. up the deep part of your life, the things that you would easily not tell anybody, anybody. and you open up open it up to Him. It's not like God doesn't know, but God wants us to talk, He wants us to talk to Him about what it is that we are going through. It's not like God is confused that oh wow, that's happened to you. No, but because he wants to keep that relationship with us, he wants to always have that conversation with us, he wants to always, you know, be there with us. So, yes, I feel like that's just the major difference between being spiritual, which is being led, being led and by being, the Holy Spirit. Yes, and just and, being religious. And just being religious. Wow, thank you so much, Funto. I just want to um, I just want to bet um, buttress what you just said. So when you talked about how you know, as you're moving around, you, it's almost like he's, he's right beside you. You're having conversations with him. When I go out some days to go out, like maybe like to have a walk when I'm exercising, and um, mm -hmm. I, I know I shared it on my Insta story one day that I was just going, and all of a sudden, I just busted out in you know prayer, like I was just it was, it was almost like a conversation, but I was calling mm -hmm. things like, oh God, this has to be this, you know, this is it, this is it, this is it. When I got home, I got to the front of my house and I see him enter. So I was just pacing in front of my house. My neighbors came out from the window. She was looking at me. Later in the day, she came and said, Tell what happened? I said, I didn't know when I fell into that prayer mode and I had to finish it because when I got to You were enjoying that prayer. Exactly. You were enjoying it. And let exactly. me tell you, the kind of light that came upon me that moment, mm. I cannot explain it. I cannot Absolutely. explain it. And the truth is, it. like you said, there is no nobody has a better access than we do with our father. No one does. Nobody. I can literally sit down and say, God, this conversation, let's have it. Because if I have to reach to reach out to somebody else to come and help me talk to you, then there is there's you said God has removed the death has removed the curtain. So let's take away this curtain and have this conversation. If you're going to and if you're going to chastise me, go ahead and chastise me. But let it mm -hmm. be that this is a conversation between a father and a daughter and like that is so profound Funto, thank you so much yes. for I, also, I, also, I, also, I also want to have i feel like a lot of people are afraid to actually have this relationship with god because somehow at the back of our head or at the back of our mind we feel like god is some 
God up there who is going to rain down thunder, who wants to punish us mm. for our sins, like if we do any small thing, is going to send brimstone and thunder on us. Mm. Oh no, that's just a big fact. Like God is a loving father. I mean, mm. God, you know what what's really you know when I think about it that it really breaks it really I mean it makes me really, really emotional is thinking about how God so loved me when I was still a sinner. I was in fact, before I was born, he sent his only son to die for me. And when I think about what Jesus went through, I don't know if anybody, if you've watched Passion of the Christ, mm -hmm. I watched that movie, but I could not even finish watching it. It was too much for me. But that movie is not, don't even depict half of, of what, what Jesus went through, really went through because, because of, of what, me. Exactly. Because of what I, in fact, 2,000 years before I was born, as in that thing, anytime I think about it, it just makes me go like, wow. So if Jesus could do this for me, why won't I want to live my life for him? Right. Do you see? Yeah. So I mean, it's understanding Jesus did that because of the love of the Father. Hmm. Remember, when Jesus was going to die on the cross the night before, Jesus was crying. He was crying tears. He was crying blood. Jesus was like, God, you let this cup pass over me because hmm. he was going to be, he was going to be, a horrible horror experience for him. For him. Was crying blood it was like God, please. I know that this is going to be so hard, and it's so hard for me to go through. But let this cup pass over me. But what did he say? He said, "Nevertheless, not my will, mm -hmm. but your will, your will be done." So it was about God's will, and God's will was that Jesus should go through that because of, of us. me. Hmm. Because exactly because of me. So when you understand and see God from that light, that God loves you so much, He gave His Son to die. So it's so it's not it's not it's, He wants you. God wants you. The truth is, God wants a relationship with you more than you want a relationship with Him. Hmm. God wants to love upon you more than you think you want to love Him. God is desire and not being is going to cause any barrier. Exactly. Because he knows that you're going to fall short every single day. Exactly. And he has already made the provision for that. That's what Jesus died on the cross for. Do you see? So you said, you know what? Anytime I see you, I don't see your sin. I don't see your mistake. I see the blood. I see Jesus. I see the cross. So you just come to me. I want you. So when, you know, the song that comes to my mind is that um, um, reckless love. Like God mm. is recklessly in love, love with, with me. me. He's chasing mm. after me. So more than you are chasing after him, he's chasing right after you. And so I just wanted us to really understand that. Because when we understand that this relationship, it's a love relationship with a loving father. God loves you more than anybody. The truth is, there's no mm. body. In fact, I mean, even the person I love the most, like, like my husband, a lot of I love my husband the most. I want to, I'll say, I should kill somebody. I should kill my son. I, even if it's his own child, to kill what? I can't. Even if it's I should kill rats. Do you get? For God, his own son, you don't know what that means, like his only mm. begotten The only son. one. Another exactly. thing I want to I want to add to this, Punto, is that um, you said something that it is a relationship of um, love, not a relationship of performance. Because the truth is that we, we play in religion, we tend to slip into that place of performance, performance. where every single thing we're doing, we're feeling like, oh, I have to be this person for me to be able to attain this, this thing, exactly. for me to be able to assess this thing, for me to be able to assess this. And I'm going to bring that to parenting, Punto. Um, mm. I sit down sometimes and I look at my children and because I understand the place of performance and the damage mm. that living a life of performance do does, I, I am very conscious about my children. Now, let me give you an example. So, when they do something wrong and then teacher will come and say, oh, mommy, I did it. Doesn't mean you don't love me anymore. I said, no. Mm. I said, I love you unconditionally. He respected of what you do. But it doesn't stop me from telling you that you've done something wrong. It doesn't mm -hmm. affect my love for you at all. If, if I need exactly. to give you food now, I will give it to you. The reason mm -hmm. is this. We slip into this performance lifestyle unknowingly. And it starts from, from being kids. When, because mm -hmm. if you have done something wrong, we will withhold exactly. love, we will withhold affection, withhold things. No. So I'm saying I this for it. parents who are here, please listen carefully. When these children do something wrong, Please, for everything they do, let us be realistic with each of each circumstances. Don't let it linger on to withholding love. Oh, I'm not your friend. 
my children, if you tell them I'm not your friend because they've done something wrong, they will tell you it's your loss. <laughs> Literally. It's your loss. Because it's not whatever they've done wrong, like you said, God has made space. God has made allowance for that thing because he mm -hmm. knows that we will fall short every single day. Your children Absolutely. will fall short. They will fall short. So, and they're even young. That's why it is your job to help them, you know, understand what is wrong and what is right. Don't play mm -hmm. the commands on them. And it is the reason why when children fail in school, they don't want to come they, home. Exactly. Because they, they know that home. somebody is going to... Exactly. exactly. Because they've, they've unconsciously been groomed into that life of performance. I have to be the first person in class for daddy to love me. I have to be the second person in class for mommy to, to apply. I love... But God, I love I love God this so much because mm -hmm. it doesn't. Please because a lot of people use this mentality because they've grown up in this kind of mentality. They bring it into their relationship with God as well. So they feel like this is how God is. I have to perform for God. I have to, you know, do this. I have to always be right. So they want, they bring that performance mentality into their relationship with God. They think that, oh, if I don't do well, God is going to punish me for this exactly. thing. Or if I'm going through something, God is going to beat me for this thing that I'm going through. Do you see? But that's not, that's not how it is with God. Mm. It's totally not Different. how it is with God. Do you see completely, absolutely different? And you see that a lot of people who also maybe had daddy issues growing up. Maybe their father wasn't there, their dad was always shouting on them, or he just was wasn't the um, was very dysfunctional. They bring that they have that idea that oh maybe God is also like this their man. Father. Maybe God mm. is also like my father. Do mm. you see? But God is mm. way different. Is way way different. He says he as in scripture says that God is love. Do you know what love is? Mm. Love, love, you know, anytime I read First Corinthians 13, I always put it there. It says, love is patient. God is patient. God is kind. God mm. is long-suffering. Do you know what long-suffering is? <laughs> God is long, like, he's, 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 he's so patient. He's so merciful. Hmm. Like he, so if God should, if God should deal with us the way we need to be dealt with, uh, hmm, all of us, we, we, nobody will make it. Hmm. Do you see? We will make it, but because his love like it cannot, it can't be anything else. It is just who he is. He cannot deny himself. He is that loving father. And I remember uh, also the story that comes to mind is the story of the prodigal son, which is mm. so apt. You see, the son went, he squandered all the money, and then he thought to himself, ah, the servants in my father's house, though they are at least they, they are eating eating three three square meals per day. And then the son said he will go to his father and beg him to at least be a servant. Right when he went to his father, when you see the scripture just says the father saw him from afar. What did the mm. father do? The father ran. Do you know what it means for a father to live where he is in the front of people? People are watching, there are people on the road, people are to, go, to, go, and, to go and welcome a child to, that exactly to run to a son who has you know, when they say son who should be disowned, mm. a son who has brought shame to the family, so to speak. He ran the father despised whatever everybody was saying. He despised how people were looking at him. He ran to meet the son. And what mm. did he do? He threw the biggest party for the son. For him. He killed the fattest lamb. He said, my son was lost, now he is he found. found. That is the same thing with us and God. Mm. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter how far or how deep you think you have gone. Uh, God exactly. is one. He's running after you. Hmm. He wants you to come back. He's saying, come back. Like, come home. I have a feast waiting for you. Do you hmm. see? And that, 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 that's the, that really depicts the love of a father. So you see, if it was a normal earthly father, the father would eh, come back to it. Just go back you to where you're going. You, I come say, back. I'm that you fail in school. You can't come back. Do you, get, do you get? Do you get? Just go back. But God, you see, just, just to show you that God is not like, your earthly father, even if your earthly father is the best father you've ever had, God is better than that earthly father. Mm. His love is way deeper than that. That's what I want. See, I remember my, my dad, right, I, I just started to get close to my dad, you know, when I was in like sec my secondary school, my SS1, my senior secondary school, and then my university was when I just really started, because growing up, I used to be very angry with my dad, like, I don't, I don't want to talk to him, because why didn't she get married to my mom? My life is basically like, you know, those Hollywood stories, so my dad married someone else, my mom married someone else, I had a stepmom, I had a stepdad, I was right in the middle, and my stepmom, God bless her, right? So I just used to be angry 
Well, I just, you know, I gave my life to Christ when I was in secondary school. And I just, you know, started to let God work on my heart. I started to get close to him. And as I started to get close to him, he really started to really love up for me. Like he would, I'll call him to send me something. And immediately he has sent me. When I got to school, you know, if I didn't have money, I'll call him. I don't have money. Oh, daddy, I sent me money. Yes, it was literally like my ACM. You know, that kind of thing. And I was just really enjoying, beginning to enjoy that relationship with him. And then when I got to 200 level, my dad died. Wow. Like, hey, God. I was literally very angry with God because I was saying, like, God, I mean, I was just getting to love this no, man. This like, man. So just, we're just having, beginning to have this relationship. And then you took him away. Like, you, I was so, I was angry with God, right? But it took me, it was until, it took me a while to realize that really, when I look back, God had the best intentions for me. God had the best plans for me. Because I look at my life now, and the truth is, if my earthly father was still alive, trust me, half of what I am now, I wouldn't be. Because hmm. he would have loved me so much, so to speak. But he that would you have caged me. You would threat. Exactly. He would have caged me. Hmm. He would have, you know, you know, I would have done you. You just have... I would just have lived a completely different life because mm. he would have had his own plans for me. For you. Do you see? For God in his loving, amazing ways. Do you see? And sometimes that's why I say we cannot always say something is good or something is bad when bad. it comes to God. Exactly. Because you so may when not we go get him to... now. You may not get what exactly. you to do now. If later yeah. you're like, ah, God, thank you, you didn't give me that thing. And you will not understand it that it's from a place of love. Of love. Hmm. Yeah, so I feel like yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. Funto, thank you so much. Like I'm so happy about the way that you're tearing it apart. Because the truth is, um, if you do not if you if you haven't experienced the reckless abandon, you really mm. can't you can't you can't really explain these things. You exactly. Really can't, because that's because true. the depth with which that you that you have experienced it and you are still mm -hmm, experiencing mm -hmm. it in your mm -hmm. life. The depth with which mm -hmm. you're going to ex explain it, it would definitely be different. So mm -hmm. I'm going to mm -hmm. go to my next question. And the next question okay. is because, um, so when it comes to host, being whole as a woman and spirituality, I mentioned before that a lot of people, the women, they hear you or they, they see that you want to come and start sounding spiritual. They're already picking, they're already picking rate because they don't <laughs> want, right? And I'm sure it's because of maybe like wrong impression or maybe things that people who are quote and unquote people who are supposed to be religious have done that's what is putting them off so i wanted you to you know share with us some of the common myths that people you know um people practice these days as spirituality so the question is what are the common myths of spirituality that people mm. practice today uh, okay um i think that one one of the myths that i, I can think of right now is you know i think I, like i shared earlier believing that you know boxing putting god in a thinking that spirituality spirituality is about putting god in a timeline like oh god you know i must or putting god on your to-do list basically we must pray by 7 p.m we must study by this we must do this by that no i think that that's one major major myth because if you have a real relationship with god you understand that these things these things is is not is not i wouldn't i'm not going to put my husband on time is anytime anytime anything comes to my mind and i want to share my husband if he's not with me i'll pick my phone send him message if he's with me i'll say ah babe oh, come you know we are constantly having conversations is continuously it's ongoing do you see the so one major myth is a uh, um, believing that you can only talk to god maybe in the mornings or at night one major myth second myth second myth is thinking that the holy spirit is just a is just a spiritual experience or you know the holy spirit or thinking that the holy spirit is just for spiritual matters that's a big lie that's a big lie. The hmm. Holy Spirit, I feel like somehow, maybe it's how they taught us in our Bible school uh, Bible school growing up, but we've been, we, we've not been really taught or schooled on the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just a feeling. It's not when, it's not just when we fall down. And we have it's not that. Hmm. Yes, he can express hmm. himself in that, but the Holy Spirit is way more than that. And the Holy Spirit is not just for spiritual things. It's not just for reading, catching revelations in the Bible. It's not for just that. Yes, it would open your eyes to the revelations in the Bible, but it's also the one who would help you translate those same revelations to become hmm. 
solutions that you can use in your business to become mm. solutions that you can use in industry to become mm. solutions that you can use for your marriage see to become the Holy Spirit is i mean is is the one who is going to scripture says that is the one is the is is the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truths i love that scripture so much because it says all truths not some truths not a few truths all truth, all truths include if you're having sex, sex issues with your husband, your Holy Spirit will guide you. True. And this is literally me. I remember when I first when I had my first child, and I mean I'm sure a lot of women can relate. And at that, that season, I just was not in the mood for anything. Like, don't even come near me. Don't touch me, you know, with my husband, because I just I was just going through a lot. So I, I knew but I knew that if this wasn't right. I mean, it was it just wasn't right. I mean, it was after this was after the six weeks, you know after delivery and all, right? Literally, I carried myself to the Holy Spirit and I told him, see, you have to help me because if you don't help me, I don't know what I'll do. Hmm. Do you know that? The very next day, I just opened Instagram and the first thing that I saw on Instagram was a course on sex for married women, for Christian married women. Guess who it was hmm. by GDK? Wow! <laughs> I was shocked. I could not even imagine that. Oh, so GDK could have a course on mm. sex in marriage as in mm. our social and I, I i took that course and i mean it was it was really what i needed at that time the same thing goes to whatever is it is it business my business a lot of people you know say oh Funto, your business is doing so well you're doing this in such a short time the truth is hmm, i remember that someone came to see me in my office like late last year and she was really crying because, you know, she had tried, she was running a small a business and, you know, she wasn't really getting it. She wasn't really doing well. She wasn't where she was ex where she expected to be. So she came to meet me, telling me, and asking me that, you know, what are my business plans? What are the strategies, you know, that I should just please mentor her and put her to see. This girl, she was literally, I mean, she was literally in tears. I sat her down and told her, say, the truth is, I don't have, it's not like I started this business with any business plan and any grand strategy like this. Exactly. Are the that exactly. Not, I just literally follow instructions that the Holy Spirit gives me. As I hear I literally you, go to I my execute. office. Hmm. Exactly. I literally have a meeting. I have days where I have a, where I have meeting with the Holy Spirit. Sir, so what are we doing this week? Hmm. What, what what are we up to? What's the plan? What's the strategy? What are we doing? The truth is, if you remove the Holy Spirit from me and not my business, you just see how low do I am. Like, I don't know anything. And I'm not even ashamed to say that. Me, my not the Holy Spirit, I'm a big Olodo. People just see me and say, well, Funto, you know, you're doing all this. <laughs> it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. So that's the, the Holy Spirit helping you translate revelational truth, scriptural truth into useful into your, solutions into every for your single business. part of your life. So, sex, business, career, is it your career? The Holy Spirit will teach you. Hmm. He will teach you how to navigate whether you have a, if you have a difficult boss, take it to the Holy Spirit. He hmm. will teach you, he will give you the wisdom you need. So that's a major myth that I feel like a lot of people are holding on to. And that's a big lie. The Holy Spirit is not just for spiritual things and spiritual experiences. The Holy Spirit is for all parts of our life. Is it finances? Last year, I, I mean, I had the Holy Spirit basically told me, what am I saying? Last year, so far, okay, the one happened that last year was that the Holy Spirit told me to start saving for my sons. I literally opened a savings account. I never used to do that before. I literally opened a savings account and started saving for them every month. So I set my, so they just automatically remove some amount from my account every month for the two of them in their two separate accounts. It was the Holy Spirit that gave me that instruction. This year, before this whole COVID-19 blah, blah, blah happened, I remember there was a time that I didn't even have so much money in my account, but I had this instruction to go and buy dollars. And now, look at what's happening today hmm. with the dollar king. It's not, I do not read it anywhere. Do you see? It's just having, you know, the only, and the truth is, the Holy Spirit, another myth is that, another myth is that some people feel like, you know, to hear God speak to you or to hear the Holy Spirit, you must hear a voice saying to you, go exactly. your seed, mm -hmm. this, go your seed, go. Mm -mm. The Holy Spirit will speak to you in nudges, in clues. You put it in your heart. You just have, and the truth is, when you think about it naturally, you yourself, you know that you cannot think about that thing by yourself. True. Do you, see? you know that this thing that has come to my mind on a normal day. This is not my brain. Yeah, exactly. This is not my normal, my normal self. That's how you know that it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. A lot of people can tell when it's the devil speaking to them. Hmm. But if we ask them, 
If it, is it God that's speaking? But they don't know if it's God that's speaking to them. Why? It should be simple, simple little monsters. If it's a bad thing, you know that it's the devil. But if it's good, just know that it is God. If it's good and it's in line with what scripture says, it does not, you know, it, it does not go against anything that the, the Bible has already said, has already written, then it is God. That is a simple litmus test. So whatever you think, whatever you are thinking of, you sp scripture also says that we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I like to translate that as whatever Christ is thinking is also thinking. Because I'm in thinking. My mind. Absolutely. Exactly. I have his mind. We have the same mind. As long as I am a child of God. Do you see? So I think that I've, I've touched on three major myths. Putting God in a box of, you know, timetable. Two, thinking that the Holy Spirit is just for spiritual matters. And three, not knowing, uh, expecting that the Holy Spirit or God will speak to you in, you know, with a still voice. Yes, telling you, my yeah. soul, my soul. you know, God said, the truth is God can speak to you anyhow. There are things that you, you may, see, there are times when I've asked the Holy Spirit for something or I've, you know, I've gone to meet him and say, God, I don't know what's happening, help me. And I will get my answer from watching a movie. Exactly. I will just be watching a movie. And if something will just happen, or they'll just listen, and I will just know that that's my or answer. Your son, or your son will just come and say, Exactly. Like, wow. Exactly. Like As in, exactly. So it can, and it can use any medium, any means, but you will just know that, ah, this is it. You see, also you might be having a conversation with some someone, and as the person is talking, the answer that the you need, the person will just say, Exactly. So, exactly. So, so let me quickly add something to this before you continue. Um, I, I have a couple of people around me that when I start to feel like there's a lot of knots, like this thing is just mm -hmm. knotted, I can't find it. I go to the spirit and then if I still don't get it, maybe I'm not hearing it. I reach out to one or two. I'm like, okay, this is how this thing is playing out in my mind. Mm -hmm. I just want us to discuss it so that the spirit can drop something on your mind for me. I'm not joking. Like every single time I have made that effort to step out, to reach out and say, sis, this is what I'm, you know, is on my mind. I, I can't seem to find and understand. And that's what is going to be that is even prompting you to go and meet, to go that and meet person. the person. The next thing the person will say will be the solution I'll be looking for. And guess what? It will be something that I probably have thought about but didn't pay extra attention. Didn't pay so, Tom, yeah. When, let me give you an example of this event. When this whole thing started, this thing came up to my mind last year. And I said this event was going to be a live event in Nigeria and it was going to be all mm. events paid by me. That's the instruction I got. And then this COVID thing came and the whole of first first quarter and second quarter is literally being jacked off mm -hmm. all of us. But then the people who need this information, who are yearning for this information, Funto, they started bombarding my DM like to your see this, 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 this. Wow. Jody Spirit said to your see, do this thing as an online event. I'm not joking with you, Funto. I will stay in the bathroom arguing with myself. Telling myself <laughs> one thousand and one reasons why this is not going to happen, why I cannot do this. Then you guys saying to me that are you are you dragging this with me? I said you should mm. go and do this. Everybody who is going to come and talk at this event, they will not no but none of them will tell you no if you reach out. I'm like, it's too late, it's too sudden. I didn't agree. The, 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 the day before I now started reaching out, I was having a bath and I started hearing to you see it is barely one week before the end of this lockdown. Everything they have heard throughout this period, some people have forgotten. Go and do mm. what I ask you to do. Funtas, I came out of the bathroom. No more argument. I came out. This is the man that came out from that from that, wow. from that I'm not joking. So, like you said, you will hear this thing and you you will know. You will just know. And the truth is that the way it works is this. If you don't listen, this thing is flying around. Somebody else is going to do that thing the way the Holy Spirit has instructed and you will sit down here and be crying. And then you will see it. You will see the person doing it. And you say, ah, this is there. It has happened to me. It has happened to me. I remember an experience when I was in school. So the, um, God started to put in my heart to do a devotional, right? It, it do a devotional for youth because I'd never seen one. I used to do, then I used to read our daily bread devotion. I don't know if you know that our daily bread. But I just felt that yes, it was too for, it was for older people. So, older you know, people. those people to tell me about doing this one for youth. We was going to have pictures. So I actually started doing it. And it was supposed to be a... Uh, an annual devotional, so like from day hmm. one to day three sixty five, and I started doing mm -hmm. it. I got to about day two hundred and something, and then my laptop crashed. I lost hmm. everything. When my laptop crashed like this, I just said, "You know what? I'm not even doing it again." I'm sorry. I just sent me a message. The very next semester, somebody launched the, a devotional. It was exactly what God told me to do. 
Wow. As in, I saw the devotion and I just started, I went to my room, I went back to my hostel and I just, I just knelt down, God, I am sorry. Hmm. Because the truth is sometimes the instruction you, you are giving is for now, is for that time. It's for right God, now. Exactly, it's for now. And if you drop that ball, God would definitely get someone else to do it because hmm. the people that he needs to reach, they need to be rich. Exactly, if, if his job needs to get done. So if, exactly. you're not, if you're not standing up to stepping up to the plate, he will hand it to somebody else. And another thing again is, with these things, with these ideas that he drops in our mind, comes with his own energy to do. And the moment you waste more time, the energy that wins. energy zooms up. It zooms up. It wins, and it's difficult it to has draw yourself to me too. back to the place where you can now. It has happened to me too. If I waited for this thing till November when I'm in Nigeria, what took one or two things will happen. Is it that because of the way the economy is right now, I may not be able to afford it again? That's one. Number two, I, it might be difficult to put everyone together like this. As exactly. I have exactly. Everyone. And exactly. You know, even the rich will be limited. So many people here are in America, they are in Canada, they are all over the place. How do I bring them into the same place? And I'm so glad that I listened. I am so glad that I listened. See, that you obeyed. Oh, that you obeyed. 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 Cried. I like to say that, you know, God has, just as we have love languages, God mm. also has love languages. You know, you do, why do we think, you know, Bible scripture says that we are made in his image and Make likeness. And likeness. So if we have love language, where did we get it from? It came hmm. from God. God has love languages. And his biggest, his number one love language, just like I have my own love language. My husband knows that if he wants to get me, he does not, I don't mean, I'm not saying, I'm not an expensive, I'm not an expensive person. Just write me cute letters, buy me roses, you know. Simple, simple things. Just write me a love note. I'll be fine. I'll be doing. I'll be doing. I'll be very cheeky. The same mm. way God's love language is obedient. Hmm. His love language, his biggest love language, love language, language is, right is joy. obedience. God wants us, as in He loves it when we obey Him. And you know, someone once described faith as obeying God immediately and exactly. Hey, please, obeying God immediately. And exactly, and I love it so much. And that's why scripture says God would rather have would, would rather have obedience than sacrifice. God is not after our sacrifice. He doesn't, he doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your sacrifice. He just needs your obedience. Obedience. That's God's number one love language. Obedience. Yeah. So you know, I love it. Once once we get that instruction, once we get that knowledge, obey immediately. Hmm. And why a lot, why a lot of people also missed out on obeying God immediately is because they try to they want to always analyze. Hey, is this is this thing good? Is it God that's telling me? Is that what I was doing? Is that what I'm not trying to do? Mm -hmm. And they go meet other people and they analyze you, analyzing everything that God has already told you to do something. You just go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and do it. Don't don't, God, don't and do analysis uh, paralysis. Don't tell God will bless you. See, I did not do this thing. Last year, beginning of 2019, I moved out of Nigeria in 2018. I've been away from Nigeria for two years now. And I don't think Desire 1709 has flourished better than when I was even physically present in Nigeria. It wasn't me. It was just God. I told God, I said, God, I've been afraid, but I'm going to just take this plunge. Let your will be done. And guess what? I died to flesh. And I stopped everyone. Else. Oh, you know, you will not carry the story. Surrender. Say, what do you think? What do you think I should do? What do you think? Let me tell you. It will take you longer to get results. It will take you longer to get anything done. Analysis paralysis will kill you. And then you will still not do any single thing. You will Absolutely. remain in that place of bringing... You, now you are giving God's work to mere mortals. No. I just told myself, I am just going to take this plunge. Whatever you decide to do with me or my business, do. God, just do I love do this. Whatever you I want. love it. I love the, I love it so much. I so yes, because bag, you know, I carried my bag. Nothing. There was no attachment. There was no attachment back to Nigeria. Gosh, I, I love it. it. And but it, I love it, it. I was in a place in a space mentally for three years, arguing, arguing with my husband, arguing with everybody. Oh, I don't want to go. Oh, my business. Oh, this. Oh, no. See that attachment to your business, my business, my career, my family, my job, my. See, if you're going to have a real relationship with God, it comes from a place of absolutely, absolutely surrendering mm -hmm. to Him. Mm -hmm. so you start, see, that business that you have is God that gave it to you. 
Hmm. You are not the owner of that business. You are hmm. just a steward. Hmm. We don't, when it comes to God, when it comes to kingdom, we understand that in God's kingdom, we don't own anything. anything. We only hmm. reward what it gives us. So even, like, even hmm. up to my sons, up to my kids, I tell, see, you are not my son. Mm. I am just the caretaker. God, see, God is a better parent. The moment I came into that understanding, sis, I stopped worrying and being panicky about exactly. my sons, about my children. And then because you, you know, before you today, I feel like, hey, body. how would I raise children in this really? perverse generation? God bless hey, you. when I realized that, see, God can do a better job at parenting than me. Than me, it freed me. So today, I I say like, to, if God tells me, you know, phone to bundle up, blah send him to. Maybe Kaduna or wherever. Do you know, have you told my husband we are going to bundle him up? Hmm. Be going. <laughs> you see, I'm not holding. So when you, you you can't have a real relationship with God if you are holding on tightly to things, hmm. whatever that thing is, whether it's your business, whether it's your marriage, hmm. whether you cannot hold on tightly to anything. Hmm. The only thing that you should hold on tightly to is God. Hmm. God hmm. wants us to worship Him and you know have that relationship with Him from a place of complete, total surrender. Hmm. And that is what is really hard for people because a lot of people want to be in control of their lives. They want to know, hmm. you know, they want to have their plans. They want to know what's going to happen. See, one of the biggest questions that I do not like people asking me is, where do you see yourself in five years then? I don't like that question. Because hmm. honestly, I don't know. I only know exactly, that I'll be in the you, God. you know what it does? It, I, I feel like that thing limits God. It limits God. I you love it so much God. because your, the truth your is, power. no matter, you don't even no matter, what will happen to no God. matter what, exactly. And the truth is, no matter how grand you think your vision your for is. yourself is, God's plan is way bigger. It's bigger. Hmm. God's plan is way bigger and way better than your plan for yourself. Hmm. So, no matter if you like, put on your vision board, cut all the things. Write down everything. God's plan is way bigger than that vision board that you have put in your room for Absolutely. five years. Absolutely. Because scripture says his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. <laughs> and I would rather have God's plans for me than exactly. have my own plans my for, own myself. Plan for myself. Hmm. Exactly. I don't even I know what I need. Do you I get? don't even know what I deserve. Do you I think? tell God, God, please do the addition and subtraction by yourself. And I will be okay Absolutely. with everything. All the division you decide to do. I will be okay with it. Whatever Literally. Is going because to God knows what is. He's the one who knows all things. He's the one who knows everything. He knows what is. You know, the God is the author and the finisher. He's the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. So he already knows the end. So me that I don't Before even know. Start. You get me. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. What do I know? I'll now come and say my plan for myself in the next five years. In next, I don't know. I just know that whatever, I will be right at the center of God's will for my life. Doing what he yes. tells me to do for them. That's what I'll, I be right at the and that, I'll be right at the center of your will for my life. Oh. Exactly. I'll and that right comes from an understanding of, that comes from a place of complete surrender. That surrender, and that's what is so hard. I remember, I know what's coming to my mind right now is the story of Abraham. Now, Abraham is what's our, the father of, of faith. That's what mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. But what called Abraham from his father's house and said, leave your father's house to a place that I will show you. Show God you. did not show Abraham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God did not tell Abraham where he was taking him to. But he, he told him to leave. He just exactly. asked him to leave everything but behind. Some of, do you see? Some of us, we want God to, God is saying, leave this place. We want God, okay, uh, if how I leave, where would I go to? Mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. how, many, how much more, how long would it take me to get there? How much do I need to save? Hmm. <laughs> how much do I need to save to do this? You're, you know, limiting God. Limiting God, we want to we want God to analyze everything for hmm. us. But you're not going to get the fullness of God if you always want to. You can't even be in control. Hmm. You let God lead. You let God lead you. Yes, I, I feel like, yeah, that's... Funta, so um, we have only five minutes left. I'm going to end this now. Oh, wow. It's a no, I'm, going to, I'm going to end this now. You guys, you know, as, we, as we've been doing since Wednesday, please sign back in immediately. I'm going to end this now. I'll save the video then. Bring Funta back right immediately so we can finish up as soon as possible. Thank you so much, guys, for being here all the way. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus.
Welcome back, Zobam. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back. If you have not been joining us since Wednesday, honestly, I just want to say that you missed so much. You have missed so, so much. You have missed so much. It's been, it's been amazing. Like, it's been amazing. And I am just, you know, just to buttress the things that Funto said, I heard, I listened, and I obeyed. And every single person that the Holy Spirit nudged my heart to reach out to and that has joined us has been beyond a blessing. Everyone who has been here since Monday can tell, since Wednesday can tell you that I, because I listened, I was obedient. Every single person I was pushed to go and, you know, reach out to, they all said yes and they've been a blessing. I have been blessed, even me, I have been blessed beyond words. I have been blessed beyond blessed beyond words like every single day i am blown away you guys i just want to share with you every single day when we finish this session i sit down another like 30 minutes writing everything i heard that sounded like rema in my journal i have seen since wednesday i have been blessed wow. beyond words beyond wanting to bless other people god has opened so much light in my brain i will just once I'm done, I will sit down and i'll be writing down okay i said this Okay, mm. Kiniko said this, and it has been it has been such an experience for me. Like I feel so, you know, elevated too in my own mm -hmm. spirit, and it's not yeah. from the place of pride or from the place of you know feeling um, accomplished yes. or anything. It's exactly. just from the place of Father, you asked me to do this. Mm. It's been amazing. So, Funda, we'll just wait another two minutes for people to come back because I, people are rushing okay. back so that we can okay. continue. This has been You know, amazing. I just want to say that I like what you just said about you also being, you know, you, you know, receiving rem and receiving light ah. even from the session and stuff. Because mm. the truth is, one, when God gives you an assignment, it's really also about you. Mm. Because there are some things God needs you to, to learn, but until you... You know, so for instance, I was running this coaching course with some women, right? And initially, I'm like, God, I can't do this. Like, what do I know? You just, what, what, what do I know? And God just said, you know, it's not really about what you know. It's about what I need to, what I need to, you know, these women that I need to read. The information right? I need to pass across. Do you get, as I am preparing my slides for each class, the Holy Spirit is just dropping light and dropping stuff into my mind that, you know, my book, the pop, the, this purpose thing, Right now, I don't even feel like I can sell that book again because what I knew, what I knew I wrote in that book when I wrote that book last year, I know like times 10 right mm. now that is not in that book. So the revelation that I have even received, the light that I have received even from, you know, letting the Holy Spirit lead me and teach through me has been completely like, I just know that it's not me. You know, it's really not me. So I love it. When, when God gives us an assignment to do or gives us an instruction to do something, it's really not about us. It's really about what he wants to do through us and in us. So, so I, just, I, just want to, I just want to reinforce that. So when, when um, every, every quarter or like every six months, I go to God and I say, please show me my teachers in this season love so that it. I can begin to chase them. If I cannot mm -hmm. afford their courses, if you know me very well here, you know that I am not afraid to pay money to mm -hmm. learn from somebody, even as Absolutely. little as learning. The truth is, if you want to live in the fullness of life, you have because you need coaches, you need mm -hmm. teachers. The scripture says it would show you your teachers. Scripture also says, buy the truth. See, buy the truth. You, I, you need people who have gone ahead of you. So I don't, yes. even, I don't even slow down. Once I can afford it, I am going for it. And mm -hmm. sometimes I go through some courses and I'm asking myself, Father Lord, you pushed me here. Why? This mm. thing that you ask me to come and learn now, what am I going to use it to do as a human being? I will just mm -hmm. say, it is not in your place to question me. Funta, let me tell you, in, in a very short period, some the experiences I've learned from that book, somebody is going to bring a situation to me that everything that I learned from that book, from that coaching, from that coach, from that person, I have to now download for this person. So it's almost like, so you sent me to go and be exactly heating up my brain just so that this person can be liberated. Because of this person. Let your will be done. Absolutely. And, I the truth is, and the truth is, once I do it, there is this feeling of thank you, God, that I listen to you and I'm able to do this for this person. It, exactly. The, that feeling is you cannot even you can't buy it. 
exactly exactly so because you were saying that sometimes when he gives us instruction it's not just for us it's for the message that he wants to pass across it's for somebody's soul that he wants to save it's mm -hmm. for somebody that he wants to bring out of a place of of suffering and we're not aware when he's pushing us to go and learn it because exactly. you might even learn this thing with your own money but guess what mm -hmm. that money where is it from is it you that made the money mm -hmm. it's god who gave you the money exactly that's why like i said you don't own anything the only steward stuff even up to our money it's not our money it's mm. god's money that is just in your account because mm. god you will give account for how you spend that money what you used to what you use it to do because guess what scripture says god is the one who gives us the power to make wealth mm -hmm. if you were sick and lying down in one hospital bed will you be will doing you any well? business or mm. going to any work that you are receiving any money hmm. somebody said so, something earlier Justine Bay said something. Just are you still here? She said the Holy Spirit saves the tiniest of things. You'll be wondering, uh uh, kill a lay. That the Holy Spirit actually told us, told her that the way you are spending, I don't like it. Absolutely. Like I think when I joined, I joined your session with Bumi just last last about two weeks ago. The Holy Spirit literally told me that stop buying sausages I for it. your kids. I saw it. I saw it. You let like, that from me. I, yes. I was like, what is, what is this sausage? I actually went to Google and read up on sausages, and I realized I was, you know, they, from what I read online, they said it was like the the um, the uh, um, leftover parts of meat that they use mm -hmm. and then they process. And, mm -hmm. So it's really not. Um, me, I, even, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I love sausage. I've been eating sausages since. But when I when that thought just came to my mind, I was like, which one is sausage? What is sausage? But I stopped it. So even to the minutest detail. Hmm. So that's why we cannot just limit the Holy Spirit to just spiritual things. Every detail, parenting, marriage, family, every single thing, all spheres of our lives, finances, everything, every hmm. single thing. Yeah. And yesterday, Okwe, Okwe really opened our eyes to where, you know, the Holy Spirit comes into, you know, sexual intercourse and intimacy in marriage. And it was just a different, he was so good. I he love it. So, he was so, so good. I love good. it so he much. so good. <laughs> So, Funta, let me go to the next question. And this next question, you just need to elaborate on it because you already answered a great part of it. Like, from the conversation, you already delved into it already. Now, somebody said, does spirituality equal wholesomeness? If it doesn't, what is the relationship? Because the person actually said, I feel like spirituality and being whole has, like, a, like an overlapping, like an overlapping um, edge that, you know, Funta so the thing is, light on it. Yeah. So the thing is, a lot of us somehow, we try, we usually have learned to compartmentalize our life. Our life. So we have mm. our spiritual life, our finances, our marriage, our... But the truth is, that's not how God expects us to live. We cannot mm. live our life for me. Jesus, when Jesus was on earth, he did not have a spiritual life and a career life and a business life and a ministry life. No, your entire life, flows from the core of your spiritual life hmm. so it's your spirituality that holds everything together that's that the is why that, that place exactly that's the center that holds that's why your spirituality is so important because you'll find that a lot of people they might be doing so good they might be making a lot of money their finances are okay their business or career is okay maybe their fine family is okay but there's just that void hmm. there's that emptiness there's that emptiness that they cannot really explain. It comes from that spirituality place. So, yes, yeah, spirituality is awesomeness. If hmm. awesomeness means that Absolutely. you're living your, you know, your life, your life as a whole is full. Hmm. You're living in the fullness of the abbey. You know, when scripture says that Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly. Abundance, that abundance yeah. is not just money. It's not just money is in all spheres in all areas you experience that abundance and it flows from having that relationship with god it flows from that place mm. of you know your spiritual work with god being led by the spirit you know do you see so yes i would say that spirituality means being whole because once you really understand what true spirituality is and you walk in it everything every other area of your life is settled you see, every other area of your life is settled. So a real spiritual woman is like, I mean, she's, is it her business? Her business is working. Yes, yeah, she would be choosing. It's not that you will not have challenges. You have challenges, but the Holy Spirit will give you the strategies for each challenges. Her family is working. 
um, uh, whatever, what I uh, meant, she's mentoring other people. She's giving back. Do you see? She's hmm. the, 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 the best example that I can give that comes to my mind right now is the Proverbs that's one woman. I love that hmm. woman so much. Um, that's, that's my Bible. I love that woman so so much. And let me just quickly read. Let me just quickly read Proverbs thirty-one from verse ten. That is what it means to be truly spiritual and truly whole. So our marriage is on point. Our family is on. A lot of people have this idea that ah, you cannot have it all. That's a big lie from the devil. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You Thank can you. have as, in, as long as you are working with God. God's plan is to give you all. That's that's what abundant life means. Abundant life is not just it's not money. It's not just about money. You can have. It means that you have abundant life. Your marriage will be blooming. Your family, your career, your business, your children, everything. It doesn't mean that you will not have challenges. You no, will have you challenges. Will. But as the challenges come, it's giving you the wisdom to navigate through those challenges. Hmm. Do you see? Let me because this problem is that a woman. A lot of people feel like she's it's, it's fake that we cannot be like her. But that's a lie. If I got to put it in the Bible, then that means it's something then that is real, possible. something that is at attainable. Do you see? I'm trying to quickly open it. No, it's fine. Go ahead. So it says, um, from verse 31, from verse 10, it says, a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman who is evil can find her. She is far more precious than jewels. Her value is far above rubies. The mm. heart of her husband trusts in her confidently. That's, that's a marriage now. Mm -hmm. This is the heart of her husband trusts in her confidently, confidently. and relies on and believes in her securely so that he has no lack of gain or need of spoil she comforts encourages and does him good as long as there's life within her so you see a marriage is sorted she um, she seeks out wool and flax and works with willing hands that's her business mm -hmm. that's her work she is like the merchant ships loaded with foodstuffs she brings her household food from her afar country so she does important business so that means that for you to be doing important business you should you yeah, have money it's yeah, not, exactly. But business is not business is good. Money is coming. Do you see? It says she rises while it is yet night and gets spiritual food for her household. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Spiritual food. She's praying in the night. That's what mm -hmm. it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a marriage, a business, a spiritual life is on point. You've seen Everything that now. Is on point. She considers a new field. She considers a new field before she buys it. This is like investment. investment. So for you to be have investment, you have to have money now. So you see, finances is not a problem. This is what it truly means to be a whole woman, to mm. be wholesome. And this is mm. I love her so much because she's the kind of person I am becoming. They ask me, be. who are you becoming like? Who are you? Is, is, is the proverb said to one woman, she's me, I am her. Do you see? It says, with savings, or you know, so she says she considers a new field before she buys or accepts it, expanding mm. prudently. Hmm. And not cutting the neglect of her present duties. So True. while she's doing her business, while she's investing, she's not cutting, she's not Nothing looking at family. Suffering. Yeah. She's not saying, ah, now I'm doing business. So, you know, she, uh, the house help is the one taking care of the children and the husband. That's not what she's doing. And I love, I love, I actually love the message version. I don't have my message Bible here. The message version says she wakes up in the morning and gives portions to her maids. And I would like to, I would like to reiterate the fact that if you're going to live in the fullness of life that God has called us to, if you're going to live truly all life, we need help. You have so to delegate. Help. You have exactly. to learn delegation. Absolutely. You need yeah. help. There are things that can be delegated and there are things that you cannot delegate. Exactly. So you need so to the you understand the things that delegate. you can delegate. Please, by all means, delegate them. You cannot do everything and all things. You will, you will crash. There's no, there's even no award. There's no award for suffering. Punta. Do you see? There there's is no, no award, award for, for suffering. suffering no. There is not. These Punta, things that you can delegate. delegate. Punta, this thing you are saying now. So I keep saying to people that everyone's circumstance is different. And at diff we have different seasons in our lives. Yes. When I was in Nigeria, Punta, I had enough hands to help. My mom was there. I, I had can imagine. Money. I had help. I had this one. So I could do a lot of things hands on with mm -hmm. my personal brand, with business and all of that. Mm -hmm. When it was time to move, I told myself, tell yourself, these things are going to suffer. Now, mm. what you're going to plan is let the Holy Spirit lead you to hire the right hands to do this and this and this. Funto, I told these people, I said, I am willing to let go of my salary from my business to you guys, just so that you deliver the job the way it mm. is delivered. So Funto, I let that go. 
and then I'm doing my ministry in my family. I'm spending my time with my children because as it is in the UK, that's you are, what the, teacher, doing. That's you are the mother, you are the this one, exactly. you are the that one, you are the this one, you are the that one. And I know that what I would pay my my help in Nigeria in, in, for mm -hmm. a month is what I'll be paying here per day if care is not taken. Exactly. And I know that I couldn't afford that. So I sat down, mm -hmm. I waved the things and I said, I'd rather hire people to do my business. Just, I am standing at an aerial point looking at things and saying, okay do this don't do this exactly what are people doing there and guess what they've done an excellent job i wouldn't have been mm -hmm. able to do that by because myself. the only spirit led you to the right people exactly see why we need the only spirit exactly so there's no there's no award for suffering no award for there's that's no, reason why no. i am now able to do a lot of my own personal things as for my calling if you look at mm -hmm. that you know, now, it's literally on autopilot i am living mm. my life as a human being they are doing what they need to do to get mm -hmm. results so mm -hmm. it makes me still look like I am shining like I was back in Nigeria. So what happens is sit down and look at your life. What can be um, outsourced? And that is exactly what this proverb said to one woman, this verse 16. It says she, con she considers. So it's just like what you were saying. Before you took the plan, before you left Nigeria, you sat down. Consider means you sit down, you plan, you strategize, you ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what am I supposed to do here? So you consider before you do what you're supposed to do. So she considers a new field before she buys it or accepts it, expanding prudently and not cutting neglect of her present duties by assuming other mm. duties. I love it so much. So it's that, it's that place of, you know, sit having that meeting. Having a, I have literally, I have strategic meetings with the Holy Spirit. My, yes, having no. that meeting and saying, okay, sir, how are we doing this? Whether it's family, marriage, business, whatever, what are we doing here? You know, please just give me the wisdom. To, to do this. And it says, with her savings of time and strength, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. I love it so much. It says, she gets herself with strength, spiritual, mm -hmm. mental, and physical fitness. Physical. I love, in fact, I love this amplified version. It says, for our God given task. So she's not doing any task that God did not send her to do. Hmm. The one that will kill you. Exactly. She's not doing any work that God did not give her to do. That's why I love to say that, you know, when the scripture in Joshua 1 verse 8, it says, um, this book of the Lord will not depart out of your mouth, but you will mm -hmm. meditate on it day and night, mm -hmm. and then you will make you, the scripture says, you will make your way prosperous, mm -hmm. and you will have good success. If scripture mentions good success, then that means there's something called bad there's success. Something exactly. And I like to say that. Bad success is any success gotten from the work that God did not send you to do. Because just as there's good stuff, scripture also says in, um, I think, First Corinthians that um, we are God's handy work, prepared, pre-planned to do the works, the good work he has pre-planned for us to do. So God has pre-planned for us to do good works. Is that good works that we will do that will lead to good success? Good so success. any work that you are doing, that is not what God sent you to do. If you like, let's say we bring you all the millions of money. It is bad success that voice, because that at voice the end of the day, exactly because at the end of the day when we stand before that's why in scripture said a lot of people will be surprised at the end of the day because some people are chasing everything you know chasing doing things that god did not send them to do you are doing an mba i'm not saying the truth is i'm not saying all these things are bad but reason why people are doing it because other people are doing it so they just hmm. want to copy or they feel like ah, if i have this mba it's going to you know it's adding they're using it as um as I'll their identity it. Yes, yeah, exactly. That, that's part of the so, things that I God, God is not sending you to. I remember when I when I left school, all my friends were traveling abroad for their masters. I also wanted to travel abroad. But all the schools I applied for, I did not get admission. The one that I got admission, I could not afford. My parents could not afford it. Do you see? I just took that as a clue. Like you know what? See, when I'm done, when I when it's time for me to do my masters, I will do it. I hmm. I do not feel any less than all my friends that have gone to do their masters. Hmm. Do you our jo I love this person. This person says our journey is different. Absolutely different. That's and why that we that always, See, Funta, this person is my, my she's been my secondary school. She's was my secondary school. I always say uh -huh. I see everybody's journey is different. Funta, a lot of people here may not here may not know that I had a CCA and in recent times wow. I said something. Somebody left a comment. She said to you, see, it's so annoying that. You don't even shout it that you even got ACCA before a lot of us. And I'm like, wow. that's not my identity. Exactly. That's not my identity. It's exactly. not that, you know, that I have to carry on my head as a placard. No, it's not my identity. And I didn't do it because people were doing it for accolade. I did it because I wanted that, you know, that season 
I felt that was important for me. That was what you I were. Was working, I was working in the bank. I was working in the bank. And then I decided I wasn't doing bank work again. I wanted to do my own thing. Fine, that thing is still relevant to me, but it's not something that I will not that tell you that head. everybody is doing this today. So you have to do this for Absolutely. you to be seen as this. However you see me, doesn't matter. It is how you see me because it's the only person I am answerable to. Finish. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it so much. So basically, we're talking on, you know, um, awesome and spirituality. I literally, yeah. I feel like spirituality is, if you really understand what it means to be spiritual, that's what exactly it means to be whole. To be whole is that every area of your life, no area is suffering. The hmm. truth is, when you understand times and seasons, some, some parts of your life would be in the back burner in some seasons. Absolutely. While some will be in the form but that's why you also need the Holy Spirit to be able to discern what season you're in and what to focus on in this in particular this season. season. Hmm. Do you see? So that is literally what it means to be whole. And that's literally what it means to be spiritual, to be just basically being led by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that will tell you, okay, in this season, this is focus on your children. In this does I mean, I feel like this last three, this last um my 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 um, my help left on Tuesday about four or five days ago, right? And I've just been in this period where I have like everything. Like I've not. It's been a long while that I've been without the help. So I had to. This morning I was still sweeping, mopping, doing everything. But I would not say because I don't have a help, I will now not do anything. I won't cook for my husband. I'll, the house will be dirty. I won't wash plates. I was literally doing everything. So I now had to structure my plan. I've changed my structure. For my so um, because I have so many things to do, I have work, I have ev um, events that I'm Ministry, supposed to speak at, webinars that I'm supposed to do. do. You see, I have business that I'm running, so I had to manage and you know structure my day, structure my time. So I'm, when once the children are sleeping, I'm awake, I'm awake, cleaning up everywhere, making their food for the day, setting up stuff. So I understand that. So when if if, oh, if any help comes, if I have help, I don't have help. I'm not going to be left helpless. Exactly. Funto, before I started this live session, Funto, I was washing plates because, mm. I mean, that's the season I'm in. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with it. And there's, absolutely. <laughs> like, I carried as this morning. I, I just put my play, my prayer playlist on, put it on, I, you know, put, put it on the dining table, was playing, and I was mopping, stripping, cleaning everywhere, washing plates. Do I wait as a, why, why won't I do it? I won't say because, oh, now... <laughs> um, now, it does not. It doesn't take away anything from me. Hmm. It does not take away anything from me. It's when the good. time comes, if I have to be domestic, I will be domestic, and that's what it is. Also, with this, she says that there's a part that she says that she rolls up her sleeves and get the work done. Work done. Work no, that needs to thinking. be done. Whatever work that needs to be done. She gets the work done. No wishful thinking and honestly, exactly. that, that is the that is the core of my life. Whatever mm. needs to get done. Get it, we'll done. get it done. Get it done. And Funto, I'm so grateful that you mentioned something. That it is okay in a particular season in your life for certain things to take the back burner. It is okay. When I moved back to the UK, Funto, for, for, the, for, a, good, for a good six months, I didn't even know who I was. Because mm. I was still trying to settle in. You know, there was still mm -hmm. mixed feelings. Even though I said, God, take the will. But you know, you still have, you know, there were days that I was feeling lonely. There were days that mm. I was feeling like, ah, shame, shame, mistake, bye. You know, but mm. still, I think I totally think get you. whatever needs to stop right now should stop. When it is time for this mm. thing to pick up back, it will pick up by itself according to God's direction. And Funto, that place, it is the place where rest. It is the place yeah, where rest. operating from rest. I, it was at that point I've been operating Funto and up until this moment, there is no reason to be fidgeting. The moment I start to feel mm. uneasy, I go back to my source and be like, this is becoming overwhelming. Where are we going with this? Do I, should I hands off this thing, God? If you tell me to hands mm -hmm. off this thing, I will hands off without explaining anything to anybody. To anybody. Love it. I will hands off without Love explaining. It. And I just want everybody who is here tonight, remember, there are seasons and times in our lives and every single person is in a season. Let me tell you, when you are in a certain season and one is taking the back burner, do what you can do in this season. Because the truth is, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. moment you move to the next season and you refuse to do anything, you're just wallowing in, play, in pain, wallowing in complaint, wallowing in anger, 
you are going to move out of that season soon and mm -hmm. everything you didn't do will come back to bite you if i love it where, you, where it is quiet whatever you can do in that season be the ultimate best at it do not let anything fall short absolutely don't let anything fall short you don't absolutely. owe me an explanation you don't owe anybody an explanation absolutely. because so many moms Funto, so many women fall into the place where they're trying to say what's Funto going to think what's to your mm. going to think please what is to <laughs> she's to the she's not even thinking she's not even thinking about you. like nobody's thinking about anybody <laughs> literally in the grand scheme of things literally exactly. you know just focus on where you are right now the only person you are answerable to is god that's the only person that's it that's, that's it. the only person i love it i love how you say you we all know body any explanation no explanation. Literally. No explanation. No explanation don't fall into that place i have been there i have been in that mm. place where i would just be wondering hey what would they say what would they say what would they say? i'm like no who are, they? Who are, who are they? they who are they in the grand scheme of things really yeah, exactly. they don't mean anything and the moment you Absolutely. step in from that place, you make the best of where you are right now. Let me tell you, you will remember these times that you are quiet and you'll be like, God, thank you for what I was thank doing you. in those quiet days. Exactly. And this is Absolutely. my personal experience that I'm sharing. And I'm so glad that Funto is here to also just kind of like, you know, just put like that, that's exactly just confirm me that, you know what, this, this is actually what it is really. <laughs> You know, yeah. so, so please let me ask you my last question so that you can then give us the parting word. I've been so blessed by you. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you now, so my much, last question sis. is this. So I said, can you please share with us a few practical steps to create and nurture a deeper relationship with God? Okay. All right. Um, basically, um, I like to say that when it comes to having a real relationship with God, it comes in three ma three major levels. I'll first share the levels, and then I'll give practical tips that I've, I mean I've worked for me. For right? you, so, yeah. Three major three levels. First, it starts with a desire. Hmm. You know, when you want to, you first that God, I want you, and I desire to know you more. I desire to have this deeper relationship with you. What does this even really mean? Help me. Let me tell you, that desire is. It's God that actually put that desire in your heart. Because remember, I said earlier that God is chasing after you more than you're chasing for him. God wants to have a relationship with you more than you want to have a relationship with him. And scripture says, we did not choose him. He chose us. That was why he already died before. You already died. He already sent Jesus to the cross because of you. So he, before you were born, he already died for you. Do you see? So number one, that desire comes. And you recognize that desire. And then, you know, that's where you're in the place. Okay, God, what can I do? I just really want to know more. From desire, it moves to a place of discipline. And this is where, you know, miss it. Because our generation cannot find it hard to be disciplined. Hmm. Because there's so many distractions. So that place of that discipline, you know, because earlier I shared on, you know, having that relationship with God is about talking to God. That place of that discipline, now where you now say, God, you know what? Okay, I'm going to have a date with you every day. I'm going to have a date with you every day, right? It doesn't stop you from also talking to him as you go through your day, but you're going to say, I'm going to have a date with you every day. So I'm going to read my Bible, whatever time is convenient for you, whether it's morning, midnight, afternoon, Anytime, find a time that is convenient for you and spend that time literally yeah. having a date with God. I remember when I was still growing my when I was still single, right? I would take myself out on weekends when I wasn't doing anything. I would take myself out, I'll carry my Bible and my journal and my pen. I used to go to a restaurant in Ikoi called Bogobi. I would spend my entire day in the restaurant having a date with Jesus. I'm literally just with my Bible and my journal. I'm just, you know, reading the Bible. I'm just writing in my journal. I'm just really talking to God. I'm literally just having a date with God. So that is exactly what God wants you to do. If it means, even if, it is, even if it's 10 minutes in a day, just, say, just be intentional about spending that 10 minutes in a day with God, just like when you know, when I shared when I just met my husband and I wanted to, you know, uh, we would intentionally wake up. I'll set my alarm to twelve midnight so that I can make the phone call to call him. I will talk for hours. So being intentional, that's where discipline. And a lot of people because they find it hard to be disciplined. There's so many things distracting us. There's Instagram. There's social media. Do you know what helps me? I do not since I think for like almost a year. In fact, over a year, what am I saying? I shut down notifications on my phone. I don't receive Instagram emails. I only 
is when I want to check my Instagram that I will check it. When I want to check my WhatsApp that I will check because some most of the time because I'm always on the go, my Bible is my number one app on my phone. So I'm always reading my Bible. So it became a distraction when I'm reading my I'm reading my Bible and then I get a notification. I want to go and check what is happening. So I just I shared this down. I shared the I shared this in my in my morning routine video. Funto, sorry to cut you short. Wow. I shared it that whenever really I said that I want to do my morning devotion, I put my phone on airplane mode. All of my notifications are off naturally. Oh. Because the truth is, while you are even praying, these things keep will just be going exactly. up and down before you know what's going on. Exactly. You can't even focus your mind on spending quality time with God exactly. as you have planned. So it's it's very so valuable. That is it. So in that first initial stage is about being intentional about your relationship with him. Because if you want to grow a relationship with someone, you're going to have to be intentional. You want you have to spend time with the person that because you want to get to know the know person them. better. Exactly. Do you see? Before you can be intimate with somebody, you have to know them. You have to, and that knowing them means spending time with them. Do you see? But we don't see spending time with it as with God as something you have to mark off your to do list. That's what I'm trying to explain. Because if you see that, eventually you will grow tired. Mm. And the truth is, God would rather have you spend three minutes with Him for every day for three months than spend three hours with Him for only three days. Because God wants to, God wants us to keep coming. So even as you are spending that three minutes with Him, just be coming every day. Three minutes is okay. Three minutes is okay. Consistently, you see, consistency, and that's where a lot of people find it hard because you know they can't. They, it's hard to be disciplined. It's hard not to be distracted. There's so many distractions, so many noise in our generation. Do you see? So you have to consciously, intentionally be disciplined. That's how you really grow. That's really how you grow. If you want to know somebody, you have to be intentional about the person. You have to spend time with the person. You have to, you know, dates, go on whatever relationship. You go to the movies together. You know, you say, I remember when I was this, every, every Saturday, we had an activity to do every Saturday. Some Saturday, maybe we'll just stay in my house. Another Saturday, we'll go and watch a movie together. Another Saturday, we'll go to a restaurant. We, you know, we had, we're intentional about spending time with each other. And that's how it is with God as well. Be intentional about spending time with Him. So, it, however, just find out what works for you and be intentional, be consistent with it. So it moves from desire to discipline. And then when you conquer that discipline part, it now becomes a delight. Mm -hmm. And that is literally, literally my life. Like, I'm constantly, like, it's, I, I, as in, I don't understand. Like, I'm always in my Bible. That's why my Bible is on my phone. I use my, I have, I have like four physical Bibles, but the one I use the most is the one on my phone because it's on the go. And something will just pop in my spirit. I want to check it in the scripture. Or I want to confirm that it's in the scripture. Or I want to confirm what the what God is saying about it. On the go, I'm in the market. I'm talking to God. I'm speaking with the Holy Spirit. I'm so what are you saying? You know, literally, God, I mean, I'll be going through something, would, just some one random mundane thing will happen. And God would give me a big revelation from that little thing. Mm. Do you see? Maybe something will happen. For instance, you know, when Toya was sharing about how we should not um, performance with our children. Literally, I remember there was a time my son, Golabo, did something. And I wanted to, I was so angry. Okay, yes, he did something and he poured, he, he, he said I should make Ribina for him. And something happened. He wasn't paying attention. And he poured the Ribina. I had already mixed it. And he poured it on the floor. I was really, very angry. And I was going to shout at him, ah, why, why are you not paying attention? Why did you let the webinar for? And then God used that instance. When I, when, when, you know, just, God just used that instance there. Hey, so this is how I treat you when you make mistakes. How do you think you feel? Hmm. So even in our mundane everyday life, God is always speaking to us. He's always showing us stuff. If you read the Bible, you know, you will find in, in different places. In, For instance, Proverbs, where, you know, um, where Solomon was saying, go to the ants. You basically, it was just, probably sitting down one day and he saw ants and God started to teach, tell him, oh, see this ant, you know, and he started to get the revelation or go and learn from the spiders or, you know, different things, go and learn from trees. It's just that people were just, maybe they just passed the tree or they just saw a tree and God started to, I like certain things about it. That's where it's, a, it's now a, where your relationship with God is a delight. It's not a lifestyle. Hmm. Like you always want to talk to God. God is the first person you want to tell anything that is happening in your life. And that's literally me. 
before I even tell my husband most times, I'm go- I've gone to meet God. Because sometimes me and my husband, can, me and my husband, maybe we are not talking or we are, you know, we are doing our couple fight. Or, I will go and meet God and say, God, this is, what your, this is what your son did to me. I don't like what he said to me. Sometimes God will tell me, go and apologize. It's hard sometimes. But I will find myself, as hard as it is, I will go and meet him and apologize. And literally, this is literally my life. Even this yesterday evening, you know, something happened. I had a webinar yesterday evening and because i've been having webinars back to back and i don't have a maid so sometimes you know i so yes i made i made his food but i did not serve him i just made it because i was already late right so i didn't serve him the dinner it was just in the kitchen it was in the pot i have not served it in the place and given it to him right and so this webinar went on and on and on for like two hours and then like by the time i was done you know i was already i could already see his face that ah this, this guy has not eaten and he's already angry. I could already sense it. And so I never I just I just went to him and said, ah, what's what what is it now? Why are you, what's happening? Have you eaten? The way he answered me. Eh? <laughs> so I went to the kitchen and I saw that oh he had not eaten because I mean I did not serve his food and I didn't tell him. I just made the food and left there and quickly went for my webinar. So what but what he said to me, I was very upset, I was very angry. But you know, as I was carrying myself, I was carrying my nose up. The Holy Spirit told me, go and apologize. Go and apologize to him. And I carried myself. I went to apologize to him. Even though, yes, I was hurt by what he said. But I mean, we said, I did not serve the food. Do you see? It's not like I, I also had my... So the Holy Spirit chastised me. And that is it. So the, you have to be open to the chastisement. So the scripture hmm. says, God corrects. God disciplines those that he loves. He loves. So it's not, if God loves you, yes, come as you are. But he loves you so much to leave you as you are. He's not going to leave you as you are. He loves you so much to leave you as you are. Do you see? And so he's going to, when you, when you, when you air sometimes, he's going to correct you. He's going to discipline mm. you. He's going to chastise you. And you have to be okay with that because mm. if, if, if he's not doing that, then he's going to you self-destruct eventually. Absolutely. So yes, yeah, so it moves from, from um, desire to, to discipline, discipline, to delight. To delight. Yes. So those are the three levels. And so how, what practical ways work for me? Number one is I journal a lot. I, I'm a writer, basically. So I love to write. I, I communicate better when I, when I write stuff down. So I have journals from way back. I think I started journaling in 2008. Yes, in 2008, way back. So I have different, different journals. Like, oh, I have like almost a Ghana must go of journals. And sometimes, and those journals, <laughs> love it. Those journals really, really help because sometimes I'll go back to what I've written before and I'll be like, wow, I have grown. I can see that ah, this thing, I now, I now understand this thing on a deeper level. I can trace my, my journey with God. Do you see? I can trace my journey with God. So journaling really helps, really, really helps a lot. And I like to say that the truth is God hardly speaks to those who do not write. If you are not writing, God is not speaking to you. Because guess what? The Bible was written by people who heard God and wrote it down. If they did not write it down, we will have the Bible. We will not have the Bible. Do you see? So you have to be journaling stuff. You have to journal your experiences. You have to journal your relationship with God, your conversations with him. Sometimes what I do is when I finish writing my all the things I want to write to God, I will now write God's response. I will write what I imagine is God's reply to me. And now I was okay. You know, when I finished writing everything, oh, my husband, you know, he did this to me. He said this, I'm not happy. I'll now write God's response. God, God, dear Funto, I understand you. I see your heart. I love you. But go and apologize to your husband. You are this, you are that. You see, I just, and everything I write, that I, I know that it's God that is saying it to me. I believe that it's God because I have the mind of Christ. So I, mean, I go back to my journal and not, sometimes I'm just like, wow, 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 wow. So I wrote this, so I knew this. I'm like, different things. Do you see? So journaling has really, really helped me a lot in my work with God. Another thing, another thing is, you know, conversing with God. Seeing prayer as not just a duty, but a conversation. As a gift, as a gift moment, conversation. Exactly, exactly. As a, you know. Just, call, just talking to God about anything and everything, just as you would speak with a friend. So journaling, saying prayer as not a duty, but a conversation with God. And that is what it is, the conversation. And what we do most times is we just go to God and talk, 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 talk. But if you're having a conversation with somebody and the person doesn't respond, it's how a would two you way street. Conversation is a two-way street. 
Exactly. How would you feel? So God, as much as you want to talk to God, God also wants to speak with you. So the truth is sometimes you might not hear words exactly, but sometimes God will give you clues. Mm. Sometimes you will just open the Bible and you will just say a scripture, and that scripture is exactly what you need. Do you see? And we, like we've, said, we've shared earlier, that sometimes I just be watching a movie and God is speaking to you through that movie. Do you see? God always, as much as you want to speak with God, God also wants to speak with you. Do you see? Yes, so journaling has really helped you a lot. Learning to converse with God, like um, um, you know, I'm just just staying with Him. Of course, I don't, I don't, don't underestimate the place of having real, you know, prayer times where you're war, warring. You know, there's a place for where you're having a conversation with God. You're having a conversation with your Father, and there's another place of where you are in the war room, fighting the demons that are that you are supposed to be fighting. Because this life is a battlefield. Mm. You just understand. You are fighting your every day of your life is a battle. You're literally fighting a battle daily. And you have to fight that battle. You fight that battle in the place of prayer. So there's a place for where you spend hours praying in the spirit, you know, settling things, binding things, losing things. There's a place for that. But when it comes to this, your relationship with God, there's that place of, you know, conversing with God. Do you see? Yes, I think those are the major things that I've really, really major, major tips for me. Generally, with God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Like, thank you so much. Funto, this has been so, so good. Like, so good. Thank you. You have no idea, you know, um, how much light you have thrown on this conversation today. Thank because the boy. truth is that the people who put, the, you know, the whole of that rigidity of, oh, it has to be mm. at a certain time, it has to be at a certain place. I'm sure a lot of people feel relieved right now. And, you know, it, it makes it easier for them to actually step into this love relationship yes. with God. Like, and it's so amazing. Funto, please, your parting words for us. And before you leave, I just wanted to mention to everyone here tonight that, guys, you need to help me go to Funto's page and go and show Funto love. Help me pray for her. Also, no. <laughs> Funto has a, 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 she has a coaching program that she's currently doing. It's called The Purpose Room. Every uh, person who has been on that you. session has spoken. Like, when I read the, when I read the reviews, Funto, I have goosebumps on my body. I'm wow. like, God, oh, this is just you. This is not Funto. Literally, this is literally, you speaking through her just and, you God. know, the blessings is pouring. Guys, I, you know, and, and I think the, the session is going to, she's, she's selling the replays for 15K. And I think that's Thank ridiculously you. cheap for all Thank of the value that is packed in there. You guys, please help me pray for Funto. Help me go to her page, show her love. Yeah. Buy the, the webinar. You will come back and tell me thank you. Anybody who I put out here and I say, guys, go and put your hand and your body and your head in. You know me. You, if you know me, you know very well that I don't do fluff. If I'm not sure about something, I will never put my name to it because my integrity to me is way more important than any mm -hmm. kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, I am mm -hmm. so grateful, Funto, for the opportunity that, I mean, for allowing me ask you to come and for coming to No, bless I am you. the one who is grateful. Funto, God will bless you. For God will bless me. you so many God ways. So God please give us a parting word. And please help me shed more light about the purpose room so that people can take advantage of it, please. Okay, thank you, sis. Thank you so much, sis. Um, basically, I think that my parting words will be, I feel like, you know, we're in this season where there's so much uncertainty and a lot of people are scared. People are wondering what am I supposed to do next? What are the next steps, you know? But I just want to say that the truth is the answers that you would need, the solutions that you need for this season, mm -hmm. for this era, is in your stillness and quietness. Hmm. Is in that place where you're still in your secret place with God. Yeah, that is where you will receive your answers. That is where you would receive your answers. Your answers are not going to come from running elter skelter, asking everybody, signing up for all the webinars. That's not where your answers will come from. Is in that place where you're still, and the Holy Spirit will be able to tell you, do this, go for this person call this person, you know, do whatever. Hmm. Do you see? So the answers that you're looking for is in your place, is in that place of quietness and stillness. And this is what Isaiah 30 verse 15 is saying. Mm -hmm. So please note that scripture down and go and read it. Isaiah 30 verse 15. And then three major things. Number one, always let your mind be alert. Be alert for whatever God is going to put in your spirit. Be alert for whatever instruction the Holy Spirit will give you, especially in this time. Because this is literally a shift. 
we have entered into a shift we are not just this you know when when we say it's, it's literally the start of a new era we are not there's mm. nothing like we're not going back to normal there's no our oh, life as we knew it before it's not going to, it's be, not going to come back to the same. exactly, exactly. So it's a new era so there's post pre covid era and post covid era just like we had um we had bc and ad do you see so this is what it is so you have to get into that your secret place in that place of quietness and stillness and let the holy spirit drop the strategies the answers the solutions to you hmm. do you see so one let your mind be alert to always document whatever it is that the holy spirit has put in Tells your heart you. mm -hmm. document it sometimes i wake up maybe i've had a dream i carry my phone and i record the dream so that i don't forget i carry mm -hmm. my phone and i record whatever it is in my heart so that i don't forget or sometimes if i'm with my journal i write it down immediately if i'm not my journal i open my notes on my phone and i write it down so document whatever it is that you sense the spirit is telling you now and number three finally you know, we said earlier that faith is doing, um, doing immediately obeying and exactly. God, obeying God immediately and, and exactly. God immediately and exactly. So that's the number three thing I would leave with us. Once you get that instruction, obey immediately and exactly. You know, we know when Jesus turned um, at the wedding in Cana, Jesus, the, um, Jesus' mother told them, "Whatever He tells you to do, do it." It did not make sense. They said they needed wine. Jesus said they should pour water. Water is what we need. Before you know, yes, we know that water. The, the truth is, you know, my husband was telling me one time, and he said that to the process that water actually comes from wine because at least when you plant the seed, you need water for it to so But God, what Jesus did was that he compressed time all the time that he would have required to make the best wine. He compressed exactly. it and turned that water into wine, and that's why that wine was the best wine. You know, they took it to the uh, master of the event and he said that ah this wine why did you keep the best for the last do you see so whatever it tells you to do whether it makes sense or it does not make sense obey exactly and immediately so those are the three major things i will leave for us especially for this new season that we are in thank you so much sis for having me on this show i really do not take it lightly i'm so honored for this god bless you thank you so much Funto. please can you just give us a quick word about the purpose room okay yes yes so basically the purpose room is literally to help people understand what purpose really is because i feel like and the truth is if you do not understand your purpose you will be running elta together trying Elta's. to do hundred things at once you will be com literally confused you would get you might even be you might even be making money or getting money from your job or your business but you truth is you never come to that point where you feel fulfilled fulfilled where you feel at peace where you're operating from a place of rest what you will just be doing is trying to hustle or trying to gather for yourself or you're, you're just thinking of me myself and my family you know but the truth is god's plan for your life is way bigger than awesome. you yourself and your whole mm. family it is not about life your life does not begin and end with you do you see so that's what the purpose room really is about to give you understanding of what purpose is and how you can align yourself to god's purpose for your life i mean right. and it's been part this five weeks sort of like a boot camp and it's been amazing like the reviews have been even me like when i got the reviews i was literally in tears i was tearing like god like god and imagine if i did not obey that instruction so i'm like so all these people would have missed out on this thing so you just see i'm like so all these people like sis we have people who are way older people who are almost double my age of course the Funto, i told you it's not about age you know i mentioned it exactly it's not about age it's not about age exactly it's not about exactly age. so basically that's what that's really what the purpose room is about now we did we had the last class today right but the the content of the course is available for sale at fifteen thousand naira, and the link is in my bio yes thank you yes. so much funto everybody if you if you if you look through the comments you can see how people have been blessed funto you have come to bless us i i knew that what better day to talk about god than you know on a sunday where everybody's at rest nobody's you know worrying and all of that thank you so yeah. much Funto. i really appreciate thank you, you for having i do me not take this access i do not take this relationship for granted and i pray that you know thank every you. single thing about your life god is going to continue to perfect everything you would do best and you know you would have reasons to glorify his name every single day. 
you know Amen. and and for everyone who listened to us tonight thank you so much everybody i really really appreciate all of you this is less of me and more of him and i'm oh, so God. blessed yes. i have been blessed every single day that you guys start you sit stay here for two hours none of you guys have left god bless you god bless you and i pray oh Lord, that every single word that you have heard from this place will make a massive impact in each and everyone's life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night oh, sorry, before we leave, tomorrow is Monday, and in Kirolumide Ojo is joining us tomorrow to talk about personal development and career development. Like, tomorrow is going to be another amazing day because the truth is, for you to live a wholesome life, Things have to be growing in your life. You have to, you know, do personal development. And so Inkirolu Media Ojo is going to join us tomorrow and she will be dissecting everything that personal development has to do with achieving and pursuing a wholesome life. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Please share with your friends, share with your sisters so that they can join us tomorrow. Faith, you have to, Faith, you have to be here tomorrow. Inkiru is going to join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. Yes, she's going to join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. So please invite your friends. Invite your friends who are in you who are in um, nine to five um, careers. Invite your friends who are entrepreneurs. Invite your friends who are creative, so that we can have, have another amazing time tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Good night. Bye, everyone.